Saver 2 cutout mounted recloser operates at high voltage. Failure to observe these precautions will result in serious personal injury or death. Some of these precautions may differ from your company's operating procedures and rules. Where a discrepancy exists, follow your company's operating procedures and rules. This video is intended to be used in conjunction with the written instruction sheet included with your product. The TripSaver 2 is a single-phase cutout mounted recloser used to eliminate unnecessary permanent outages. SNC's TripSaver 2 Service Center Configuration Software allows owners to configure the TripSaver 2 recloser from a computer, set TCC curves, customize the LCD screens, control communication settings, set the local manual open parameters, and look at snapshots. The configuration kit comes with an AC adapter, power outlet plug adapters, a power module, extension cord, a USB transceiver, labels, and a carrying case. The software is available to download only to customers who have purchased the configuration kit. The latest release is posted on the SNC Automation Customer Support Portal. See our video on downloading and installing software through the customer portal. That video uses Intelleruptor software as an example, but the same principles apply to the TripSaver 2 Reclosers software. After installing, we're now ready to open the software. There's a desktop icon with the SNC logo and SCC followed by your version number, or you can go through the start menu. It's important that you're using version 1.6 or higher as that release has the latest features. You'll be greeted by this warning screen read and understand the screen and click the green button to continue. Here's the user interface. You can see how it's organized with a menu bar across the top, a menu tree down the left side, and the main body taking up the rest of the screen. The menu bar across the top is the quick access toolbar. These are frequently used commands like opening snapshot files, loading set points, or connecting to a TripSaver 2 recloser so you don't have to dig through menus to do the most basic tasks. The tree on the left highlights the current screen and grays out the rest. You can see the main body page is content aware, so it'll change depending on what tab you choose on the left. This is where you configure the device. If you open the software without connecting a TripSaver 2 recloser, it'll open in standalone mode, which is offline. You can use standalone mode to set parameters that you save to a set point file and can later upload to a TripSaver 2 recloser. This mode can also be used to review previously downloaded snapshots, which contain the information about the TripSaver 2 recloser at the time the snapshot was downloaded, including battery charge, serial numbers, and events. When you first start SCC in standalone mode, it'll have these setting screens available. TCC curve settings, NR curve settings, sectionalizing settings, LCD screen settings, communication settings, and local manual open. You'll have additional screens available when you connect a TripSaver 2 recloser or if you open a setpoint file. The software provides wireless communication to the TripSaver 2 recloser using the USB transceiver. To install the transceiver, simply plug it into your computer's USB port. The TripSaver 2 recloser needs to be powered using the AC adapter and power module or the cordless power module, which is available separately. It's held in place magnetically. We can now connect the TripSaver 2 recloser. Click on Connection, Connect to Device. When both the software and TripSaver 2 recloser are using firmware version 1.8 or higher, the easiest way to connect is using the Auto Detect feature. If you have trouble connecting, move the unit closer to the USB transceiver. Optimal position is between 1 and 4 inches away and at a 45 degree angle. 
This transceiver ID request dialog box will open. The transceiver ID is unique to each TripSaver 2 recloser. It's a 32-digit string, but you'll need to only enter the last 16 digits. There are three places to find this code. By scanning the QR code embedded on the lower housing of the TripSaver 2 recloser. You can also find the ID by rotating the mode selector level on the TripSaver 2 recloser. The LCD screens will start to scroll. You'll come to Transceiver ID. The third way to find the code is to look on the back side of the yellow Do Not Drop Handle With Care tag attached to each unit when it leaves S&C. Enter this ID code and the TripSaver 2 recloser will connect to the computer. Enter the last 16 digits in the form. You can see the drop-down as well. It'll save the last 16 IDs you've entered for quicker access. Click OK and the TripSaver 2 recloser will connect. If you have any problems connecting at this point, make sure you're using software version 1.6 or higher and that the USB transceiver is at least 1.6 as well. An older version of the USB transceiver will not work. If you need an updated USB transceiver, use the SNC customer portal to start a support case. We have a video about support cases here. Now that the TripSaver 2 recloser is connected, the software will change from standalone mode to connected mode. You can see that we now have new screens on the left, status, event logs, functional test, RNR functions, gateway drop open, and DNP remote drop open. At the bottom of the screen, you'll find additional information about your TripSaver 2 recloser. Let's go through all of the screens in the menu tree for an overview. The status screen is only available in connected mode or when a snapshot file is open. This is a view only screen and presents status information, a summary of TCC curve settings, and general device information. This is a good place for a quick look at settings on the TripSaver 2 recloser. This video is more of a general overview, but the written instructions go through each and every category on the page. The TCC, or Time Current Characteristic Curve Settings screen, is where you program the coordination settings. There's no limit to how you can set your TripSaver 2 recloser. The initial trip is always required. From there, you can add more tests, up to four. You can also copy and paste tests so you're not starting from scratch each time. You can see there is a lot of information you can play with here in order to set each TripSaver 2 recloser exactly how you want it. Again, the written instructions go into great detail about all of these different categories. You should be very familiar with the written instructions and TCC curves before attempting to program the TripSaver 2 recloser. There are also default curves that are programmed into every standard TripSaver 2 recloser before it leaves the factory. This is the starting point of the configuration process and those are the settings you see here. Once you program the TripSaver 2 recloser, you can validate the settings to make sure there are no errors. There's a validate button in the quick access toolbar along the top. If you need to upload these settings to multiple TripSaver 2 reclosers, you can save the settings as a set point file. That will allow you to connect a new TripSaver 2 recloser with the same firmware version and upload your settings without having to go through all the programming again. In the quick access toolbar, you'll find these buttons for open, close, and save snapshots. Set points can also be programmed in standalone mode without a TripSaver 2 recloser. The NR Curve Settings screen allows the user to program different TCC curves specifically for NR or RNR modes. These settings will be used by the TripSaver 2 recloser when the mode selector lever is in the down position or when the recloser is in the RNR mode. All curves in the NR Curve Settings menu are set the same and have the same setting ranges as the curves in the TCC Curve Settings menu. There are three NR Curve Settings, Standard NR, Post Fault Wake Up NR, and Cold Wake Up NR. The standard NR setting allows the user to select any curve in the library when NR or RNR mode is active. The recloser will not go through a reclosing sequence, but will respond to the TCC set in the standard NR setting field. To make the standard NR setting behave like an instantaneous curve 
as was standard in the Service Center configuration software version 1.6 and earlier. Select definite time for the inverse segment mode and make sure the minimum trip value of the standard NR setting is the same as the minimum trip value of the initial trip curve. The post fault wake up NR setting is configured when a separate curve is desired when the Trip Saver 2 recloser is energized or is closed into its mounting after a fault event occurs. The setting will be active for the first 10 cycles after the recloser is closed into its mounting and energized after the recloser sees fault current. The post fault wake up NR setting will only be used after the recloser has dropped out in response to fault current. If a post fault wake up NR setting is not required, set the TCC curve to the same settings as standard NR TCC setting. In situations where the recloser is waking up or is closed into the mounting after being de-energized when it did not experience a dropout event, the cold wake up NR setting will be used. This setting is configured when a separate curve is desired in response to a cold wake up of the TripSaver 2 recloser. In most cases, it is a slower curve. The setting will be active for the first 10 cycles after the recloser is closed into its mounting or is energized after a situation in which the load current dropped below 1.5 amperes. The cold wake up TCC curve will not be used in a post fault situation where the load is picked up after the Trip Saver 2 recloser has sensed a fault condition. In those cases, the post fault wake up NR curve will be used. If a cold wake up NR setting is not required, set the TCC curve to the same settings as the standard NR setting. The Trip Saver 2 recloser features a sectionalizing function for both the 4KA and 6.3KA rated models. When enabled, a Trip Saver 2 recloser will start its secondary protection function, the sectionalizing function, over a user specified range of fault currents when the source side circuit breaker or recloser, for whatever reason, trips faster than the Trip Saver 2 recloser's TCC overcurrent protection. It will count the number of operations of the source side circuit breaker or recloser and will drop open after a user specified number of counts. The LCD screen settings screen allows users to customize the LCD screen on the TripSaver 2 recloser. You can change the language settings, what is displayed as the normal or first screen, how many times the screens will repeat before staying on the normal screen, how long each screen is shown before moving to the next, and what screen is displayed when the device is dropped open. Below you can see the available screens on the left and which screens will be displayed on the right. It's easy to change the order of the screens using these arrows, or to remove or add screens. The Communications tab is for configuring two settings related to how the TripSaver 2 recloser's remote and local communications work. This section is only available when a TripSaver 2 recloser with the extended open interval option is connected, or if a snapshot file saved from a TripSaver 2 recloser with that option is open. Communications mode can be set to either non-gateway mode or gateway mode. See the written instructions for information on gateway versus non-gateway mode. The TripSaver 2 cutout mounted recloser with firmware version 1.6 or later can be opened manually without any load break tools by using the local manual open or LMO feature. The feature provides an operation sequence that commands the TripSaver 2 device to open the vacuum interrupter contacts and drop open. The device must be powered for the feature to work, or a line worker could use a cordless power module to temporarily power up the device when the load current is low. This yellow load brake label is included in the shipping container. It is intended to be used to indicate that local manual open has been enabled on the device. Two parameters control how LMO functions, the operations count which is the number of times the lever needs to be operated, and an operations timeout window, which is the amount of time in seconds in which you must complete the operations. By default, the feature is disabled and must be enabled and have the value set while configuring the device. When the LMO feature is enabled, a new LCD screen titled LMO will be automatically displayed as the first scrolling screen with the operations count on the left and the time window shown on the right. Confirm the values with your utility. In this example, we're using an operations count of six. 
and a time window of 40 seconds. Operate the mode selector lever six times in a 40 second window to trigger the LMO command. Every single movement of the lever counts as one operation. As soon as the six operations are complete, the TripSaver 2 recloser will start a time delay sequence. For the next 10 seconds, LMO cancel will appear on the LCD screen. The 10 second window is fixed. Any operation of the mode selector lever during this time will cancel the LMO command and LMO canceled will appear on the screen. If the command is not canceled within 10 seconds, a walk away message will then be displayed. The walk away window is fixed at 20 seconds and gives users time to move away from the device. During the walk away period, the operator can no longer cancel the LMO operation. After 20 seconds, the device will break the load current, drop open, and reset. The Event Log screen provides eight different historical counts, including the number of interrupter operations and device drop opens of the connected TripSaver 2 recloser and the duration and current level of the last 25 trip events. The firmware uses separate memory to store full event logs for engineering use so if you need to analyze an event more than 25 trips past, it is possible. If you open a support case with SNC, you may be asked to forward this event log. It can be obtained by saving a snapshot file. As you can see, there's a lot of information in these event logs. If you click the Clear All Events button, it will erase these last 25 events from this screen, but they are still saved in the full event log in the snapshot file. The functional test screen monitors the device status of the connected TripSaver 2 recloser. You can simulate a temporary or permanent fault from this screen. Please note that in order for these tests to work, the TripSaver 2 recloser must either be installed in a current production SNC type XS fuse cutout mounting with sufficient clearance to drop open or be placed horizontally on a flat surface with the trunnion pointing up. If the TripSaver 2 recloser is on its side, the tests will not work properly and could lead to a device entering the ServiceNow state. TripSaver 2 reclosers with the extended open interval, dash O option, can communicate with the TripSaver 2 reclosers communication gateway and the user can remotely set the device to remote non-reclose, R dash NR, operational mode and back to auto mode when the mode selector lever is in the up position. To avoid a situation where the TripSaver 2 recloser is permanently stuck in the R-NR mode when remote communications are not available, the user can set the operational mode back to the auto setting locally by using the R-NR reset feature when a TripSaver 2 recloser is connected to the SNC TripSaver 2 Service Center configuration software. The user can configure up to three TripSaver 2 reclosers to drop open together in response to either a drop open event caused by a TCC curve, orientation change, or the local manual open feature. This feature requires a communications gateway. See SNC Instruction Sheet 461509 for more details on configuring the TripSaver 2 recloser to work in gateway drop open mode. The TripSaver 2 recloser must be properly paired with an SNC TripSaver 2 communications gateway, and it must be properly configured to accept a drop open command in response to a DNP3 command received via the connected SCADA transceiver. For detailed instructions for proper configuration of the remote drop open feature in the TripSaver 2 recloser and the communication gateway, see SNC instruction sheet 461-509. We hope you have found this video informative. If you have any questions, please visit our website at snc.com.